see a body laying in the roadway. It was pretty crazy. Uh, interesting. I was going to class and just saw people were running and was nervous. I was like, oh crap. Just what saw people see? running, cop sirens, everything. And joining me live on the phone from Ohio State University's freshman Stephen Yunker, who heard gunshots. Stephen, where are you right now? Um, we're right in, in my dorm. And your dorm is on campus. Do you know? Give me an idea, proximity-wise, where you are to at least uh, what you believe to be a center, the center of all of this activity. Um, I'm about 300 yards away. I, there's two streets over, and I can see the whole thing from my window. What do you see now? Um, I see still police everywhere. Um, there was a body early, and I mean. It's just a mess out there. You say you saw a body? Yes, there was a body laying on the ground when I first looked out there, and it's now covered with a body bag. Now, is that body near Watts Hall? We understand this is where a lot of the activity was taking place. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, it's fairly close. I'm not 100% sure where Watts Hall is, but it's pretty close to it. So, Stephen, looking out your window right now, you were able to see what you believe to be a body that's covered. Yes, yes. Is there police activity around that body? Um, there's about 10 police there. It looks like talking to each other. Nothing really. They're next to the body, but they're not really doing anything with it currently. You heard shots this morning uh, when you were inside your room? Yeah, I was sitting in my room with my roommate getting ready for class, and I heard five or six gunshots going off, and then sirens immediately following that. What was the last update um, you received from the university? Have you been following their Twitter account, their emergency management account? Um, I did. I was at first, but, I mean, in the last few minutes, I have not been. From what I know, we're still supposed to stay inside and stay safe. Now you're inside your residence hall. About how many people live there? Um, around 360, I believe, in this building. Um, maybe, I mean, maybe close to 500. And right now, are you inside your dorm room? Yeah, I'm in my dorm room with friends from the floor. There's about 10 of us in here. And at this point, what you've been told is to shelter in place. Is that what the belief is at this point? Um, yes. I mean, I attempted to go to class, and I went downstairs, and I was told to stay inside and go back to my room. When you went downstairs, were there police personnel or law enforcement around your dorm? Um, I saw police in the dorm next door to us, but none in my dorm or around my dorm, no. Going back to what you can see right now, Stephen, from your window, do you has the police activity remained the same while we're talking here? Is is the body, uh, what you believe to be a body, still there? Uh, yes, it does look like there is a body still there, and the police that are by the body, nothing has changed there, but there are police in other places. Is this? what you believe to be the body or a body is it on the sidewalk is it in the middle of the street are there ambulances um, around there is it is on the sidewalk and i did see a couple ambulances pulling up but they're not there currently they're not there currently. i do see one on the street next to that though okay. at, i think the intersection there and you are again about how far from this activity um, where the ambulances? Yeah, where where you see um, the police and what you believe to be a body that's covered there. Um, I'm about 300, 400 yards away. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Stephen, obviously um, you have to heed what, what you're being told right now and to shelter in place. You're there with other students. I know that this is absolutely frightening and the information is limited, it's but I appreciate scary. you. It is very scary, and I'm sure that your parents and your family uh, would want you to call them right now and let them know that you are okay and uh, heed the advice of the authorities here at this point. And I know it's very, very scary here, um, but please call your family and let them know you're right. okay. Um, Will do. We also have on the phone with us another student, Nicole Kreinbrink. Uh, Nicole, where are you right now? 
Uh, I am in Scott Lab, which is a couple buildings from Watts Hall, which where this all took place. Um, were you? Did you hear gunfire? Um, no, I never heard gunfire. Um, I was on College Road or walking along it, and I was getting ready to cross the street, and I saw there was a big crowd of people outside, and. Um, so, you know, I saw a car coming, so I waited, and this car just swerved and just hit, like, ran into the whole group of people, and it hit a cop really bad. So um, I ran over there, because I saw the cop, he's rolling around, and I could tell he was in a lot of pain, so I was just going to try and offer some help, and all these people were running and screaming and yelling, and they, these girls told me, they're like, please, get up, get up. So I, I just ran with them, and... So we ran more north campus um, by Curl Hall, I think, and um, I asked them why they were all standing outside, and she said that someone pulled the fire alarm. So um, this had to be planned out. So you, you saw someone deliberately run into a plow into the crowd of people? Mm-hmm. Did you ever see the individual get out of that car? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, I mean, I saw him hit all those people, and I, all I could just see is that cop rolling on the ground, and I could tell he was pretty hurt. So I, I initially ran over there to help him, but there's so many people running and telling me to run, and I got, I got to him, and I decided to turn around because at that point, you know, I thought, what the heck, I, I've never seen anything like this. This has to be planned. Like, it, you know, my intuition told me to run. So, Nicole, let me, let me get this clear here. So the officer was standing by. Was that officer there responding to the reports of a fire gunshots? Or was that a campus um, officer who was... I'm, I'm thinking he was standing there since the fire alarm was pulled. I don't know. A girl told me that a fire alarm was pulled in Watts Hall and a fire truck just pulled away, like, a minute beforehand. And so it just looked like the cops were standing by. A bunch of people were standing outside. So, you, so you, I think the cop was responding to the fire alarm. Okay, so you believe the officer was there responding to the fire alarm and mm -hmm. an individual. Do you remember what kind of vehicle it was? Um, I don't know what kind it was. Um, I know it was like a grayish silver and it had, I think it had black stripes down the side. Um, but it was definitely an older make, but that's all I could really tell. And you never had a chance to see the individual in the vehicle? Mm -mm, no. You couldn't tell if there was more than one person in the car? I, I have no idea. I, yeah, I can't answer that. Were, you seem to believe that the officer, you, you helped treat this officer, the officer was injured? Yeah, I'm, I, I think okay. he is. I don't know his condition now, but... Okay. All right. Yeah, it what, seemed like he was in pain. Okay. So, Nicole, what, I don't know if you're near a television or not or, or what you can see out your window, but I need to let our audience know we're seeing two people who appear to be in handcuffs, two men here, um, being escorted rather mildly by officers from this scene. So we're not sure what's going on there. Nicole, what can you see from your window? Um, I'm sheltered in place, and okay. I don't. I don't really see much. Okay. I'm just trying to stay away from the whole area. Yeah. To be honest. Are you so. alone in your? How many people are around where you are? Um, I'm by myself. Okay. This whole place is really locked up. Are, um, are you able to, to hear announcements? To get are, spot. Okay. Okay, Nicole, just please shelter in place. Um, hopefully we'll have more information. I know the university has the emergency management uh, office there sending out information to students like yourself. And I really appreciate you giving us whatever details you were able to, but please stay safe and remain sheltered in place. I want to take our audience to our local affiliate who's able to give us some more description of what many of you just saw, as I did, two individuals being escorted. They appear to be handcuffed. Let's listen in. Uh, in handcuffs behind their back and they put them in that SWAT vehicle that just moved them off. So we do know two people have been taken into custody. We don't know whether they've been arrested or what. I have seen some other people coming out, a man in a business suit and a tie just walking out with a SWAT officer with his arm around him. He was not cuffed. Those were the only two we saw come out, but both of those were cuffed, an African-American in a black um, shirt and black pants. And he also looked like he had an identification 
identification on a lanyard, um, one of those um, OSU identifications or some form of identification that he had draped around his front on a lanyard. So an African American and a uh, white man, um, and uh, they were dressed in black and the other one dressed in gray and blue jeans. We'll, when we get more information, we'll get that to you. Back to you guys. Okay. Let me bring in Pete Williams. He is standing by our justice correspondent in Washington. Pete, uh, federal authorities, have you heard anything as far as their part in this investigation? Well, they've been asked to respond. So both the uh, FBI and the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms have field offices uh, right nearby. And they've, they've been responding to help the police with this response. This remains a police matter for now. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that they have suspects. Now, I don't know whether it's the same people who were uh, taken into custody, whether those people that you uh, were talking with the local affiliate uh, about who were arrested or at least uh, detained uh, are wanted for questioning or whether they're considered suspects. We don't know that yet. Uh, the information flowing back here to Washington is uh, a little behind here because the scene of the action is Ohio and the federal authorities at this point are very much in a help out mode it's not their case so uh, the, you know the information we're getting here is is being passed yeah. along by the local authorities who as you may understand have their hands full mm -hmm. uh, we had heard some time back that there were as many as two suspects at one point now you know Tamron this happens a lot in these situations where uh, people say that there's more than one suspect or the even the authorities think there is so we don't know yet whether there in fact is just one suspect or two or one or two people believed to have been involved in this attack. Um, we did hear earlier that one of them was 20, possibly a student at OSU, but all of that is uh, to be confirmed. We just don't know uh, much to, to uh, pass along to you that right, we can right. be confident yeah. and uh, that is confirmed. Uh, Pete, a lot of people are asking about the open carry and, and, and what are the uh, rules in place for the university. Ohio is an open carry state, but we've talked about this before. Different universities are able to implement within the law certain restrictions. What do we know about the Ohio State? I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Okay. I don't know what the law in Ohio is. Uh, you're right. In some states, uh, the campuses have tried to restrict open carry on campus and have not been successful in some states and others they are so we'll have to see what the law is okay. in ohio okay we'll get that clarification thank you very much pete i have rahima ellis here with me as well and let's bring in a uh, former atf special agent jim cavanaugh jim let me start with you this is a massive campus as i mentioned it by population of enrollment uh, the third largest um the campus itself 16 thousand acres 1293 buildings the center of all of this activity at least right now is this building uh, a material science and engineering building it's not a residence hall it's called watts hall on campus um, what do authorities when you're looking at such a massive uh, amount of space and a huge population a lot of these kids just got back last night from thanksgiving <laughs> 